today and welcome into game one this group stage ti group stage between psg lgd and evil g both teams have already played a couple of games today lgd i believe went Five one and one in remaining. their series which was quite a surprise i believe eg 2 0 do a quick little check on that yeah that was it. They 2 0 Sonics and um, LGD went 1 1 against Hikori, which was quite a surprise. So, getting into our opening PSG, picks LGD and bans here for this game one. Pick. Evil geniuses turn to pick. LGD picking up uh, Undying, and, or not picking up, banning Undying and Chen. And EG getting rid of Morphling and the Flock. So Morphling being one of the more impactful heroes. Uh, Ten seconds remaining. Evil geniuses turn to pick. As, as the core position have really high high winning answers so far in the last chance qualifiers. And Clockwork was just one of those heroes that had a lot of answers for the Primal Beast. With Clockwork being banned out, the Primal Beast is picked up by EG as well as Rubik. Marcy was left through, and we've seen already in the opening rounds Ten of the group remain. stage that Marcy has been let through on a few occasions. Still is being incredibly remain. strong, but these teams in the uh, main stage or group stage now of TI11 better teams aren't rating the Marcy as high priority as a lot of the last chance qualifier and regional teams did. Evil geniuses turn to ban. PSG LGD respond with the Visage after they see the Rubik. So Marcy Visage, Marcy is likely to be run in that fourth position. Visage Ten can be remaining. taken. I mean, m mainly to the offlane. It looks Five like in this meta, remaining. you get the auras on the Visage, the Wraith Pact, potentially some AC later on, and you sort of fight around the Visage like that mobile tower, that mobile aura area for the team. In the past, we have seen Visage be run in the mid lane a little more often, but not so much. All right, matter. Second phase bans, Naga is taken out along with Pudge. Pudge has been popular already in the first uh, first day of the group stage, proving very, very strong in a, in a lot of matches. Naga, one of those uh, rising carries in this patch, it's going to become more and more popular, particularly even against the Morphling. EG remove the Faceless Void. Looking to remove that large AoE control from the side of LGD. PSG LGD's turn to ban. And Ever Spirit. So starting to take out some mid heroes. Nothing to say. Want to remove the, the hero pool he could possibly have to choose from for this game one. We are so early in the in the tournament at the moment that um, metas there's going to be multiple metas developed throughout this remaining. tournament and we can already see that the the meta that was established in the last chance qualifiers already remaining. in a little bit sort of kick, you know, the door's been kicked down a little bit as uh marcy has been let through in this draft rubik is somewhat of a, a preemptive pick uh so you don't want to go for those big team fight ultis you don't really want to pick an enigma into Rubik. You can see Enigma has been completely ignored up until the stage as well. So with the Rubik pick, it sort of makes you think twice about that. You know, Earthshake is very similar. You don't really want to pick an Earthshake into Rubik. It just provides Ten way too much, uh, way too many options for the Rubik to get some good stuff spell steals off. Remaining. So, <clears throat> so we're going to see the brood mother band out. Evil geniuses Spider being removed early as well. This proved to be quite strong uh, just as a laner with the insatiable hunger and the webs. Just constant regen, keep moving up. 
but just as a, as a brew mother always does, taking over the opposite of jungle in that sort of 10 to 10 to 20 minute phase and really not allowing any farm build error in there. Supports can really get picked off quite easily, so that will be taken out. EG picked the Sven. Now, at this point in the draft, I'm tempted to think that this is a support Sven. It's likely that crit might play this Sven. Um, just picking it so early for Arteezy seems a little remaining. bit odd. Um, gives plenty of picks to counter the Sven if that's if that was going to be a pos one. It looks as if it's going to be a mid primal beast. Probably um, Arbet will take that. Rubik will be the five, and I'm just hedging at the moment that this might be a, a support support Sven. It's good for the bonus armor against the birds. So Marcy with the unleash. Visage with the familiars. Um, that will cry armor is really, really effective against those two abilities. So didn't, once you get that shard as well, it even makes it even better. So I think the more and more I think about this, the more I think that this will be a support Sven. And that's really going to negate a lot of the sort of physical damage Ooh. drafts that LGD were looking for here in their first two picks. That would have been really easy for LGD at this point in the draft to pivot into a vengeful spirit, you know, look for physical damage amplification. But with the Sven, it sort of does make LGD rethink the rest of their draft. And see, they've used a lot of their reserve time right now. They still go for Mars, so looking for still physical damage in the form of the God's Rebuke, but it does offer a fair bit of magical burst as well with the Spear and Arena. Oracle is grabbed for LGD. So they'll have that position 5 Oracle sitting behind looking to save. Um, it's, at the moment, it's not really... Remaining. There's not real any great synergy with these heroes. You know, Mars and Visage, they get caught out. The Oracle's there to save. Uh, it's not really going to be any great turnaround from those two. I guess if the Mars didn't get off the arena, but by that point, it's probably going to be BKB's already popped. I really think this Oracle is to save whoever the POS 1 for LGD is going to be. Tango 12, we finally see you. Ah, uh, yes. Delayed stream. It appears I see your comments in real time, uh, but you won't hear me respond to them for 10 minutes. <laughs> Puzzles. Shadow Fiend picked for EG. Now, this could be the POS 1. We've been seeing more and more Shadow Fiend Pos 1 in, Ten seconds remaining. in recent times. Five but there's seconds also the alternative that the Primal Beast is just the offlane. You go mid Shadow Fiend and you're still uh, looking for the safe laner. Yeah, thank you for the compliment, Tosca. I do look 10 years younger. I know that's a good thing or a bad thing at my age now. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So last phase bans. SG LGDs turn to ban. Will be the Terror Blade and also uh, Beastmaster, the side of LGD. They'll remove that from the draft. So e LGD are of the opinion that EG are looking for an offlaner. And that this is probably a safe lane Shadow Fiend mid lane Primal Beast. Which is my first instinct, but it does leave EG some room to pivot. The side of LGD, um, we see a Mars and a Visage. We did say the Visage is likely to be that offlane hero with the auras, but maybe you could run the Visage mid, Mars offlane, Mars mid, Visage offlane. It is quite interchangeable at the moment. In fact, that's one of the benefits of Dota in the last, um, I want to say the last couple of years, is there's been a lot more flexibility of picks. 
you know, no longer is a hero very much pigeonholed into a particular role. Now, obviously, this can be taken a little bit out of context, particularly in pub matches, but when you look at Mars, it's quite reasonable to run a Mars mid. It's not something that's outside of the realms of, of probability. And, you know, it's reasonable to run a Shadow Fiend safe, right? safe lane. It's not something that is completely absurd. EG get rid of the Drow and LGD remove the Stormbreaker. Their last pick for their whole draft is going to head around is the Lunar. LGD. So Oracle sitting behind the Lunar looking to save. Arme wants to hit that strong timing with the Visage. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense, this draft. The Sven was a, a really nice pick in terms of the, the armor. Remaining. I mean, there's a lot of physical damage coming out here from LGD, so that Five Warcry armor will remaining. be of high, high value in these teamfights that are sure to come sooner rather than later. With LGD's lineup, Luna will be wanting to win around that 30-35 minutes. Visage as well. Visage doesn't like to go past that 30-35 minutes. And Marcy particularly really strong. Oh my goodness, the Enigma who has been ignored the entire draft. Oops. The entire draft, the Enigma has been ignored and it wasn't banned in the final phase. EG just get to pick a free Enigma game. The Night 4 will pick that up in the pause 3. It will be the safe lane, Arteezy, uh, Shadow Fiend. Abed will be the mid Primal Beast. Britain Fly uh, will be the support. So it'll be a 5 Sven for Rubik. To the side of LGD, nothing to say. We'll take the Mars mid. Wines in Q on the supports Oracle and Marcy. Faith Beyond. Excuse me. Faith Beyond will be in the off lane. And Arme will have the safe lane. Oops. Now, I am a little bit sick still. You may hear me occasionally mute the mic. I don't want to blast your ears with the coughs, but um, if I don't get there in time, please excuse me. I've done the best speed recovering over the last couple of days to try and get in casting shape. This is much better. You shall not pass. Okay. Both teams coming out with the aggressive tips to begin the game and their smokes to get some vision down. I bet it'll throw an obs mid and they'll also get theirs on this little side uh, side of the bottom river rune spot let's just check the timings on this 549 547 very close together possible those ones could be dewatered last ward for the side of lgd will be up on this high ground near the top jungle to roshan stands vigil inside the pit both teams We'll just wait for the rune spawn at the time being. We did see some crazy 5v5 engagements uh, already in the tournament before the horn, but it doesn't look like we can get that today. Although, four from one side, three on the other sentry is popped. And out they go. Fly leads in with the storm and a stun coming through from Arbed that actually got the damage. Faith Beyond might be in trouble here. Zin Q as well. There's a lot of AoE. Secondary stun in 10 seconds. That'll be the first blood going to crit. So as we head to our lanes, nothing to say we'll be in the mid lane with the Mars up against Abed on the Primal Beast. Down the safe lane, Luna will be handled by Arme. They'll be supported by White on the Oracle. And in the off lane for EG, will be Nightfall on the Enigma. Completely uncounted this game with crit on the Rubik. And the top lane, Fly on the support Sven, actually raises two. They're just going to look for the right clicks in the and they'll get the job done. Made Beyond up here with the free visit. Already looking to 
some denies here early on this group wave. <coughs> Bottom lane, Nightfall. Getting hit with the level 1 Lunar Blessing. Very good uh, damage in lane. Now Fly wants to get to that point in this game where he's got the high levels of Warcry to help his team in the team fights. But early on, he's just going to be a, a tanky, tanky lad no. with the Storm Manor. Try and support SF as much as he can. The top lane. Fly is getting quite low. Uh, SF is quite self-dependent as well, plenty of damage, uh, can sort of last it quite well with the raises, so he doesn't necessarily need a traditional support in the lane, which is maybe what EG were thinking when they went for this. Look for the slow, Grave Chill, come out, then Q just has the level in Dispose, now picks up the rebound as well. Mid lane, <coughs> Arbed being chased down, doesn't actually find the kill from nothing to say. And 2-0 so far for EG. Oracle. Trying to deal a little bit of damage over on the crit, but nothing too much to be concerned about. Fly getting quite low. Raises Mango's popped. Does hit again on Faith Beyond. Now Zinq is just trying to body block to get the visage away and safe. A couple of tangos. zinq has got plenty of regen himself. Arbed's actually TPing home, so looking to regen back up, has got the bottle. Probably going to smoke back out to a lane here, try and make a side lane rotation. Maybe bottom even with the Malifus and the lift would be a pretty good setup to get onto this Luna. <coughs> bottom lane killing off the Eidolons, making sure they don't get a chance to multiply. Actually, bling Y back, they have the Malifus as well, they'll have the right clicks, there's the second tick. A little bit more crit, as a mango and a fade. Bolt, if he needs it, doesn't even end up popping the mango, we'll do now. The Y is being precariously low in this bottom lane, hanging off to the side in the trees. Abed securing that. Both mids, the Hubbard and nothing to say, both securing those range creep denies in the mid lane. Top side, Arteezy 11 and 8, so hasn't really had a great lane compared to Ame down here in the safe lane for LGD. 23 and 5, so really getting the farm on down this bottom lane. I guess some of those last hits would be the Eidolons as well. Side. Flies actually found himself in a little bit of trouble. There'll be another soul assumption in a moment. Not even needing it. Zinq just coming through with a rebound. Arteezy brings the creeps over. Trying to connect the two creep waves up. We might get the ranged creep here. Zinq managing to pull the wave back where he wants it. Manipulating the wave a little bit more. Actually popping the mango. Might throw him back in. Dispose with the grave chill. That'll be... Soul Assumption, just a stun from the rebound, it's a little bit too late. Actually, the damage just came out too quickly from the side of EG, and Soul Assumption wasn't even cast. It wouldn't have been enough to burst, but yeah, LGD just fighting off a little more than they could chew there in that top side. Puphead now just walking at nothing to say behind the tier, tier 1. No fear at Radiant's all. Middle tower is under attack. Chasing down on. There is a spear available, so Abed can't really commit with the trample. We'll get speared back some damage on this tier 1 tower to begin with. Certainly pretty valuable at this stage in the game. nightfall has got plenty. He's got his three Eidolons. Probably wants him to mold. Actually, got multiple Eidolons here. A lot of damage is going to come through on the Y with the Malifus. This be a dead Oracle. All the damage from his Eidolons. Six Eidolons. All with 28 damage each. So 5 to 1 so far for EG to start this game. Fly's got a OBS on him. Maybe looking to plan it somewhere in the lane, get some vision on any TP rotations to come in, or just maybe on a high ground in the triangle somewhere. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 
mid lane. Trample is on nothing. So actually, the spears on cooldown is up now. Up it has the level six. I think about using it once he has a couple other spells available again. Flies walking through. We'll get spotted out by the creep. Rings are spawning, it will be bottom. Off oh, rather, and the stun's hit. Actually, did not see fly. I guess it's night time. There's the pulverize. Doesn't have enough meta, but he won't need anything more. That's just it. ZinQ did pick up the invis rune from the top river. Show himself in that mid lane and give himself a little bit of free XP. Whilst the mid laner, nothing to say, is in, you know, recovery mode at the moment. Respawning. Bartizi being an SF will recover. He's up to 31 and 20, 33 and 7. Actually recovered quite well. The Luna, um, after that pretty decent start, has had to back off the lane. And we'll just be farming up in the jungle. Nothing to say, being body blocked by Fly. No more Storm Heaven for 8 seconds. We almost did die there, top lane. TP's coming in. Bartizi. Being pressured, but I have to respect the damage of this this SF. You know, this is still an SF with two levels in Shadow Ray. Shadow Ray is actually three in the Necro Mastery, so maxed out on those souls, dealing plenty of right click damage so far. In Q, two in rebound, one two one build at the moment. Hasn't gone for the max sidekick. Uh, build this time sometimes the max sidekick into the unleashed probably more the, the marcy core build but i have seen it on the supports as well particularly when you have visage with the birds you know just to amp up the the damage those birds do we planted sentry immediately sees it lgg just Radiance sensing that one i guess they had any vision Dying on it they just they just sort of felt that it was might might have been planted down Arbet trampling towards this top Rune will find the haste. He has a arena if he wants to use it. We'll just fortified. return back to this mid lane. But uh, maybe a TP rotation with the hasted Mars and arena ready could make a pretty big difference on one of these side lanes. At the moment, bottom side, Nightfall is pretty much having a free game. If we check over to net worth, we can see he's actually top, uh, or second top net worth, just underneath Arteezy. So no issues for him at the moment. As we saw, this was a last pick Enigma, so completely left uncounted this game. There is no Silencer, there is no Rubik, there is no Warlock, Venge, there is nothing that is going to really pierce this BKB black hole. In fact, and sometimes think there may be something you can build into. Stun actually, top lane, rebound, does connect on RTZ, thrown back with the Dispose. Winding up the Requiem, will cancel it, walking back further underneath this T1 tower. Fortune's end will connect. Now turning around with the Razors, might have enough damage, has to run away. Respect the damage coming, out from, damage coming from Oracle. Fly Stormhammer will be enough to protect Arteezy. Pop the Clarity, wants to have plenty of mana to run a few more creeps here maybe. Well, I think LGD are thinking about a dive. They will, they connect, rebound through onto the Fly. Stun comes out. In then we connect with the root damage as well from Soul Assumption as a hasted nothing to say. Comes in and slaps him with the spear or the shield to the face. Remember, this is just the pause five, so four, four heroes top to kill fly and get a tier one tower. But meanwhile, EG are pushing mid, mid tier one. Cliff will come out, it's delaying a little bit, bro. Coming back into the mid lane, there still is an arena. No spear though now for 10. They know the spear is being used. Abed moves in with the pulverized razors to follow, and there'll be enough damage between that and the lift. Pulling him closer towards the Shadow Fiend. And this is a, a trade you're happy to take. A mid tier one for a top tier one. I mean, top one hasn't even fallen yet. Imagine it will now with the familiars. In fact, maybe not. It's eating in. Abed's here. He wants to make a play. He's charging up with the onslaught. Finds himself on top of Faith Beyond. Trample damage. Really cutting through this HP. Rick's TP in as well. Will have a lift if he needs it. Doesn't even, doesn't even require it. Abed just gets the kill. So EG, they take the mid tower. They also defend their top, top tier one for the time being and, and snag a kill while they're at it.
Abed still hunting around. He's got Pulverize again. Why needs to be careful. We'll get the Fates Edict, level one, just to prevent the magical damage. Pretty good counter to the trample. And top, top three net worth heroes are all on the side of EG 11 minutes in. 3k net worth lead to the dire side. And this is not really where you want to be in a Lunar Draft. In a Lunar Draft, you really want to be the one that is top of the net worth. And Luna will scale really quickly. See, maxed out Lunar Blessing. Level 3 in Moonglaze. Hasn't even grabbed a point yet in the Eclipse. Just the one in Lucent Beam for maybe cancelling a TP or assisting trying to get a kill. But otherwise, just farming up these Eidolons as well. Probably should have pulled them away so they didn't get didn't get cleaned up there by Ame. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Roger Beak stolen from crit. Station. Three heroes top. Rebound in. Does catch on the fly. Pretty tanky with some war cry. We can get it off. Abed's arrived with the onslaught and the trample. AT Edict actually stopping any damage coming out on the Zincune. Tails turn around with the pulverize. With the unleash. Nightfall. The kill onto Y off on the side, still holding on to a black hole if he needs it. And EG really punishing LGD. Really punishing LGD for his rotations to this top side. It's a steal, it's the level one or oh, level two now, Lucent Beam on Arme. Didn't he? Didn't mix, max out the, the moon glaives for the time being. We might have even gone into stats with the build that we were seeing here so far. Maybe just stats was the way for Ame going forward, but he has elected to go back into high levels in the Lucent Beam. It actually might have been not a decent idea considering there is a Rubik on the other team. Crit. Ah. Uh, Crit's walked into the middle of an arena. Spear will connect. Actually, not getting hit by the skeleton soldiers. Rebound to follow up and. Why will you ink that with the level 3 Bufrying Flame? But Arbeds, I mean, on the side, has got the Pulverize off. Now there's you know, Pulse down the ground. Why will have to use the ult on himself to try and keep himself alive for the time being? Uproar to slow down, nothing to say. On slot forward. Doesn't quite connect. Black Hole actually whips. Black Hole for farming. Just a spell. Those, uh... Those creeps really, really got it. So, uh, I mean, Nightfall, who'll have another chance to, to pull off a black hole in another 170 seconds. Was just hoping to catch. Nothing to say right on the edge of that one, but Tumbles to win the phase boots, was able to just get his way out of that situation. Kind of looked pretty bad there for LGD for a moment, but they managed to, to evacuate the area quite well. They're working on the Blink Dagger now on Nothing to Say. Zinq has the Phase Boots working straight into a BKB. No one's forgotten how to play this for Marcy. Get yourself a BKB, get yourself a Basher, and you can threaten anyone on the map. The, simply the amount of damage that comes out just from the just from the levels you get on Marcy. Not even any particular items. It's, it's pretty insane. Faith Beyond has the Vladimir's Offering. I'd suspect maybe working into the Wraith Pact at some point, although it's not picked up just yet. The bottom lane. Kill is found on nothing to say. Apologies for missing that one. Arteezy and the crew are down here to tie that up. Meanwhile, top lane, Nightfall, doesn't have Black Hole for another 90. Might be looking to move in, but Abed's looking for the fight himself, actually. Has a regen rune. Hold up. I'm coming through from crit. Doesn't quite land, but he gets the lift. And now Faith Beyond will just be destroyed. That's your offlane visage. Looking to be quite tanky. And the Malifus at the last second will find why. He's going to try and get a, a last hit over onto that Wraith Pack. He will get it done. Grab himself 100 gold on the way out. I mean, that was actually uh, 
prioritizing the right thing there before he goes down. Nightfall, Wraith Pact is complete. As we saw, yeah, no Wraith Pact yet on the visage. I'm really interested to see where, yeah, the shards speed up. He's got, as soon as he's got the gold, it's in 34 seconds. And we'll see the Warcry is now under Spellborn, passively grants armor all allies near Sven. Seven passive armor plus the 15 from the, from the activatable. So it's pretty good once you get that on fly. He's just going to be a, a mobile aura for the rest of his team as they take Roche. And first Roshan, Artesia will grab that on the safe lane. Shadowfiend, getting close towards the BKB, just has the Dragon Lance plus Mask of Madness at the moment. Won't be too long till that BKB comes online. And really good spell to be stolen by Crit at the moment. Has the rebound actually stunned? On flight. I kill the birds. They both go down. They immediate resummon. So they'll be on cooldown for the moment. The time being is in queue. As Yuzi unleashed. But Pulverize coming through from our bed. Will connect. Save from the magic damage. The fortunes and Arena catches actually onto Enigma. There is a black hole available if you can get it off. Requiem catching onto the rest of the team. Fearing him back. Actually, LG. Can you make a turnaround? Trying to clean up the Aegis. Flips used from the low ground. BKB now from our bed. He's on top of Arme. He needs some assistance from the rest of his team. There's not much they can do against Abed when he's BKB'd. There's a Pulverize in a second as well. Faith Beyond, he slows him down. There's the black hole from Nightfall. Reflecting onto Faith Beyond, actually picking out, making his way a little further. Stun immediately catches on, nothing to say. With the Onslaught coming through as he blinked into it. Stolen Eclipse now. Finishes off the kill. Abed still taking a lot of damage off to the side. Zinku rebounding in. And EG will be able to make their way back into the triangle. Crit Stolen Eclipse was used. Probably won't look to hold on to that. He's level 2 though. He might He might actually. 108 seconds. Yeah, he'll, he'll have it. He'll have it be ready to go. He'll have a short, short duration to use it before it expires. Yeah, Fate's Edict. Very good this game, but... Question is, is it good enough? 100% magic uh, damage resistance. Why wow, is he gonna walk up the high ground? Blue hit for stun, Malphus, and Stormhammer. Race back on the deck, and he's got no chance to do anything. He will just immediately die. It's some tight idea. And it would look actually stun. Catching on to Arteezy. Doesn't have the Aegis anymore. Pops the Mask of Madison, just goes to work on Zin Q. Just asserting dominance behind the tier 2 tower at the moment. He had the rest of the team behind him. He wasn't that concerned at all. Glyph will be forced out. I bet with another regen room. He does another one. He really push himself in these fights as far as the hero can go. Pop the regen room once he's out, once he's safe and can get involved once again. Or just use it for farming, more likely. Smoked up. Nothing the same. Why they're in the triangle of EG, and I think they know it. Crits TP to cross. They're sandwiching at the moment. Birds trailing behind. Trying to find the pick. They've got the lift onto Arme. And there's Nightfall. I don't think they realize there's so many people here, but the BKB from Arme, they want to fight. They get the turn from the Mars. And the Enigma will go down inside the arena. RTZ TPs in. Will have a lot of damage. BKB now from Abed. With the Pulverize, all the magical damage being negated as well as the False Promise. Can Arme survive through this? The Stolen Eclipse. I think the damage is just going to be a little too much. He dies. Trying to wind up the Requiem from RTZ. Will get the fear off. Damage being negated once again. But it's only negating the magical, not the physical. As RTZ goes to work. Abed. Being held back. Why trying to run away? Fly has another store hammer in one. Nothing to say. Will abandon the cause and TP out. They're still chasing actually. Fly wants more. He's running in. He's got wands. I don't even think he needs to pop it for the stun. Arped will clean up with the onslaught. And uh, it's a 6k net worth lead now to EG as they just run over LGD on that bottom side. You can see both teams were sort of playing each other there. Uh, LGD knew that maybe there was going to be a rotation. They were ready for it. But I think being ready for it and being able to deal with it are two very different things. Nightfall actually with 
black hole. Scouting out. Nothing to say. Does see him. Midnight Pulse on the ground, clearing the trees. Wraith Pack. Try and stop any blink daggers. Crits here. Will deal the damage. Steals Bulwark. And, I mean, nothing to say. He's just gonna probably die slowly up here. Well, I did say die slowly. The pace of the death escalated once Arbet arrived <laughs> with this primal beast. Fresh BKB now on RTZ. He's pretty much unkillable now in these fights. Unless he gets caught by a Mars Spear into the arena. Maybe follow up with the rebound. That's about the only way he goes down at the moment. If he doesn't get to pop the BKB. With the Sven standing around as well as the Rubik. I mean Sven has the shard now. So undispellable Warcry armor as well as just passive armor just being around. Like plus 7 passive. See it here. Just armor increased by 7. Not even actively... So 7 plus 15, that's 22 bonus armor he's going to get when that wool cry is popped. Undispellable. Pretty insane when you when you look at it like that. As a sports fan can counter so much physical damage. And you look at the side of LGD, it's a Luna, it's a Mars, it's a Visage, a Marcy. I mean, yeah, there's mixed damage there, but primarily as, as the game moves on, it's going to be more and more physical. Fly's even grabbed himself Medallion of Courage, maybe even working the Solar Crest. That's an additional 5 armor on top of Arteezy most likely. So we said 22 plus another 5, that's 20, 27 armor that Fly is looking to give over to Arteezy. And 22 of that in an AoE. Daring of Courage has been just a somewhat forgotten item for, for the better part of the last 6 months. I mean, it hasn't really been seen in pro matches, hasn't really been seen in pubs. There was a time there when Medallion and particularly the Solar Crest was just so valuable that teams were getting two of them. Not so much anymore, but perhaps that's going to change in this TI patch. Arme still trying to farm up, but now he's not where you want to be as a Lunar. He's behind the farm. This is a time when you want to be extending ahead, already have that next tier of item available, the Butterfly or the Satanic, already have it online, but... This is going to be a hard one for LG if they want to pull it back because in terms of the two teams as they scale into the later game EG are going to have the advantage. They already have an 8k lead and the heroes on EG will scale a lot better than the heroes on LGD. That's why they're making this desperate smoke play right now. It's actually going to find it. They're catching with the spear. They blow up the Rubik off the bat with the soul assumption. Oops. Pop the Wraith back down on the ground and EG just say okay good out pause 4. Um, and just back out. That's the smoke used, and they'll just continue farming. The black hole is a huge threat. In fact, is that the BKB coming out? Completed. Got the, the recipe. Yeah, that's it. That's a full BKB, Oops. and there is nothing in L LGD's arsenal that can cancel this. BKB black hole is completely uncounted. The nightfall... He can pretty much do whatever he wants with the Blink and BKB. There is no fear at all for him. And a poor Faith Beyond with the Malifus. Abed's charging through with the Trample. Slowing down the uproar. Pulverize on top of the Midnight Pulse. And it's going to struggle to stay alive. The last right clicks from Abed will get the job done. Why is he even hanging on to this broom handle? It's got the plus four armor. So he's actually incredibly tanky himself as well as a support. 1400 HP, you know, uh, what's that, 27 armor, you know, this is just as a support. He's really hard to bring down. Even for, him, for LGD to take down this POS 5, they need to commit a lot of spells. And Fly's aware of that, you know, he can just, he can just be in the middle of the fights and do what he can with the god strength. It doesn't matter if he's not killing people, if he deals a little bit of damage, has all the auras going, all the armor he can offer up to Arbed and to Arteezy, Nightfall, and they're just not going to die. Not to physical damage anyway. Butterfly complete on Arteezy. Oops. Still don't see the butterfly. Actually, there is. Butterfly is complete on Arme as well. Working in the Satanic. Doesn't have a Courier. Smoked up. Five men. Might full look at him. Oh, we could catch everyone. Could be a dirty, dirty uh, uh, black hole here in a moment. Up the high ground. Actually, not full first, though. Actually, blinking it. He 
BKB turn around from Artis. He's going to have the fear, but the BKB is from Ame as well. And they're just trying to trade. Butterfly on Butterfly. Zinku does have the False Promise committed. There's a black hole just on the one. So that will be a dead Marcy. White will continue off towards the river. Abed chasing through, trying to get through onto Faith Beyond. Mark will be there with the Malthus as well. Turn around with the damage. Meanwhile, White himself an invit rune and does survive. So even with a one-man black hole just on the Marcy, which I mean, the BKB Marcy, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big threat. Oz4 though, pretty big threat. Uh, they still take the fight, EG, in convincing fashion. It was a buyback from Crit. Did, he was the one who was caught by the initial initiation. Actually, bottom lane, they found Ame as well, Abed and Fly. And uh, this is really, really becoming quite concerning now for LGD. Jeeva's Guard, close to being completed for Abed, and going for the Aghanim Scepter after that. So, thinking about what that break is going to be good for. Mainly the Gravekeeper's Cloak is the one that's coming to mind. Uh, otherwise, I mean, yeah, there's always the, the Lunar Blessing and the Moonglaves as, as passives as well that can be broken. So, three pretty impactful passives that that break will have an impact on once that Aghanim Scepter is online, if the game even goes that far. LGD... I mean, they've come into this series, into the today, they've already gone 1-1 one one in their first series uh, in, a, in a series that they probably expected to 2-0 in, in somewhat of stomps. And now they're 9k down to EG. Roshan is being taken. They're going to be there too late. There'll be a shard. See who's going to take it. Will be the shard on to Arteezy. So Aegis and shard. Upgrade there to Necromancery. A little bit of uh, a little bit of extra damage. Actually, they're still looking for the fight. They find Arteezy. He just walks up the high ground, runs into all five, and they are running. But why are you running? Arteezy just sends them all back in the opposite direction. Diddy Rune, bottom river. Arbed will pick that up. Put it in the bottle. Lift. Oh, they found Arme. Pulverize will follow. There's no BKB in time. The follow-up's done. The Stormhammer's there, and he's just not going to get there in time. He didn't even use the BKB. Come in from Zinku. Will use the Unleash. Get the kill over the crit. That's a dieback. The right-click damage is on to Faith Beyond. Arteezy winds up the Requiem. Does cancel it. Just wants to probably use it for the fear. But the side of LGD, it wasn't even necessary. You don't need to cause them to fear. Have fear to run away. They're going to have enough fear as it is. So they get a support in trade for their pos one and four and Arteezy is just going to run onto the high ground Abed as well no fear here you can see that activated Necromastery World's Rebuke does just deal a little bit more damage as well the bird it's picked off Midnight Pulse behind the racks cancelling any blink daggers of uh, heroes that might wander inside of the AoE of that Nothing to say, he's got to be careful to make sure that it doesn't get, doesn't get uh, cancelled there. Yeah, split him under the ward. I see nothing to say, going past the tier 2 tower. He'll heal up, they get collapsing. Everyone's surrounding around. They're going to get on him, he's got a BKB blink. I may actually TP's in. Okay. Black Hole catches onto the two cores. Fly's doing the damage, they find themselves there with the pulverized. Ame's dead once again. Requiem follow up. The Marcy doesn't even have a chance. Stuns fly back in the opposite direction. And there's GG. LGD call it. They realize they can't fight against this Enigma. The Enigma that was last pick completely ignored in the draft and just dominating LGD in this game one. The EG one game up in this best of two.